11% on Rotten Tomatoes. Holy crappy movies, Batman. We watched Batman and Robin, and I'm going to defend it. This is In Defense of Bad Movies. <laughs> In Defense of Bad Movies, Sam Bowen here. Who else is here? Hi. Hi, Laura King. How are you? Good. <laughs> no, actually, I'm not really good because this movie was a piece of shit. <gasps> oh, I'm Ooh. sorry. Wait, 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 wait. wait. <laughs> I'm getting ahead of myself. Okay. You are getting ahead of yourself. Now let's go across from Laura. <laughs> Who's Hello, over there? Lauren McJanet Taylor. Hello, everyone. How are you? All right. How are you doing? Good. Bobby? I'm, I'm also here. That's Bobby true. Bobby Mattern. How That's are you? That's true. I'm good. I'm good. We watch... First of all, I'm going to say, you're welcome for <laughs> suggesting we watch Batman and Robin. But before we get started, Sam, you yes. said holy crappy movies. Does that mean you're acknowledging once and for all that this is a crappy movie? I am absolutely not acknowledging that because it isn't. It was just a good, you know, a quippy open. So... <laughs> hmm. Where to begin? I guess, Okay. So I guess I'll start with the defense. If you guys are looking at it as just a con continuation of the Tim Burton Batman and Rob or Batman movies, <laughs> it's no, it's not. It does not fit in. It's not the same tone. It's not the same theme. It's different. This movie is a spiritual continuation of the 1966 Batman series. And if looked through those goggles, it's awesome. And that's pretty much the beginning and end of my defense argument. As we go on, I'll give you examples of how that is the case, perhaps, but yeah, that's it. I just want to begin by saying that, Sam, I love you, <laughs> that you are an intelligent and sensitive man, and no matter what happens here, I want you to know that. I appreciate that. All right. <laughs> Can we go with the easiest way to debunk that? The Batman 66 show was funny, and <laughs> no, no part of this movie was funny. It's absolutely. Yeah. This movie was hilarious. Yeah. No, actually, I could not wait for it to be <laughs> I have to say that I feel like I have to rewatch the movie because trying to see it through your eyes, Sam, the first half hour of the movie, I was resisting writing down in my notes any, like, what the fuck moment I had. So, no, it's trying to be campy. It's trying to be big. Oh, like, I wrote, Try like, to see it through that. And then after a point, I was like, no, this is, no, this is not working. I wrote WTF a couple times, actually. <laughs> and then I wrote ridiculous all in capital letters and That's underlined okay. it. It can be ridiculous. I think ten minutes serious. into the movie, we get... Oh, no, no, no. Let's go back to the very beginning. In, in and oh, two so, seconds of the yeah. movie. Are we talking about the logos? Because I want to watch a whole movie about the logos. By <laughs> we get the really, really awesome animated Batman and Robin logo, like, flying, flying through space together. Other, coming together, they're a team. We're selling a franchise, folks. You're right. That's step one. Step two is bat nipples. Oh, yeah. <laughs> bat nipples were amazing. I love the bat... And the bat close-up and the bat butts. You love... And the bat butt, it's... So the first shot is them getting ready, it's, and it's, it's hilarious. Is it hilarious? It is hilarious. Or is it weirdly homoerotic in a just strange way? They're not mutually exclusive. <laughs> so so, but like, okay, visual jokes aside, if we give that one to Sam, which don't worry, I'm not giving that one to Sam. Wait, I just heard <laughs> if you're giving me a sandwich. No. <laughs> So if we're giving that one to Sam, which I, I want to make absolutely clear, I'm not giving that one to Sam. The first, the first joke of the movie is is Chris O'Donnell saying, "I want a car. Chicks dig cars." I that was not whiny enough. Could you do it in car? <laughs> yeah. Or just and, oh, I'm sorry. This is why. I want a car. Chicks dig cars. Chris O'Donnell screws up from the very first line of the <laughs> oh, movie, okay. and also <laughs> the writer <laughs> screws up from the very first time. The writer, by the way, Academy Award winner Akiva Goldman. Yeah, Wait. who was up and down in his career, looking at the IMDb, was like, "This." I was some thinking, good like, this here. is way below him, and then you read through his IMDb credits, and you're like, "Oh, no, it's probably he's right on par." All, with he's all over the place. I yeah, find well, with I mean, his you know how career. writing, you writing is. There's usually a team of job. different people who yeah. went through went through their hands. So who knows? So let's believe if he that was he the genius first behind and then all the jokes. All the punch up just ruined it. Someone came in later and did all the freeze puns. But then you 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 didn't say the after Chris O'Donnell. Who Chris O'Donnell was not good. 
I will give you that. Yeah. Then oh, yeah. after that, you get George Clooney. This, this is why is Superman what's... works alone. <laughs> Which is this the first shared universe? Yes, that is Got... the only in this iteration. Yeah. It's the only time to acknowledge, and that was actually a little fun. And oh, I loved it. Had an I mean, it keeps moment. going right after that, guys. Don't wait up, Al. And then Alfred says, "What does he say?" I'll cancel the pizzas. <laughs> I, I like. I believe that these are that these were written as jokes, but I, I just I haven't seen any evidence of them being funny. Like jokes are supposed to be funny. <laughs> I I was afraid, or I, my thought was that I would have to defend it's a it's kinship to the sixty six series. So everything I wrote down was examples of that. So want, I did not write down all the great jokes, which there are a lot because jokes. I laughed my head off. <laughs> Let's go to the 66. <laughs> not literally. Let's go to the 66 Batman show. Yes. I, I would say that the the biggest problem this has in trying to match up to the 66 Batman show is that the 66 Batman show has a very specific tone that makes it work. They have a they have a formula that they're really really or an equation they're really really working hard at. They're not just throwing everything at the wall and hoping that <laughs> some of it will stick. But I would say the biggest one is that Adam West Batman. If, even though it's campy, he's so sincere and so earnest and he's so everything that he takes so seriously. And, and that's what makes the 66 Batman show really work a lot of the time. George Clooney's Batman is so smug and so above everything mm-hmm. that's happening. He's always the one with like the sarcastic one-liner and that's just not Batman and it doesn't work in this movie at all. I had, the, I got the feeling that George Clooney wanted to be anywhere but uh, there the, while he was here <laughs> it told though that's absolutely true that he just kind of got handed this like my brother said you're the new Batman and that he just had a bad time on set yeah he it looked like miserable the villains were all having a blast yeah and George Clooney did not look happy I will no, say that no. and that's sad because he is the central mm-hmm. I and will... he could have been a good Batman like I yeah. feel sad I that he, he got this one that. absolutely yeah I no I feel I feel I would love for him to, well, maybe not now, but I would love to, for him to have gotten another chance. Yeah, he was sort of cheated in this end. Yeah, but, and I'm not, I, I'm not saying it's perfect. I'm <laughs> saying it's very funny, and I love the movie. And not, not in any way, ironically, do I enjoy it. I, I literally think it's, I think it's funny. I mean, you had, just to set up the, the connection okay. to the... Okay, oh, let's okay. talk about all the plots going on here. I mean, first oh off, I don't even know where you... Can... plots? Yeah, I don't, I don't need, like, little tiny story snippets. I, I don't things, know what you want to call... Yeah, I mean, More you have than... you have Batman and Robin's feud, you have Mr. <laughs> Freeze against Batman and Robin, the, and you have Poison Ivy, um, and then you have Bane, and then you have <laughs> Alfred, and then you have Batgirl. I mean, I'm missing a bunch of other ones. There but were I mean, so many opportunities for toys for this movie. Oh, yeah, this that's is true. Really... <laughs> this is very true. Uh, but yeah, and they all have really imprecise motivations. Like, the first vil- <laughs> very first villain we meet is Freeze, and Commissioner Gordon comes online and says, We got a new villain! And so they go to take care <laughs> he of him. Does. And he's just. <laughs> He's just... <laughs> he does it in, in, like, what was it, like, on the bat steering wheel? <laughs> yeah, that right was amazing. I mean, that was, like, their equivalent of the red phone from the series. <laughs> and he's, his, oh, the science is so, I want to suspend such disbelief because if we are believing this is, you know, precursor of uh, following the 60s, then the science isn't really important. It's no. sort of, like, please take it with a grain of salt. But... Mr. Freeze defies all science. His plan is to get diamonds to run his cold suit <laughs> now, so he can live. Which, I like, even even that I would allow might happen in the 66 Batman series. Just, like, what? just nonsensical, like, he needs diamonds to power a suit and he wants to freeze <laughs> any, everything, sure. But, like, <laughs> Mr. Freeze's dialogue, it's, uh, it's, it's it was it pretty bad. chilling how good it was? <laughs> it was amazing. But I love how... His first line, the I... Ice men cometh. <laughs> that, literary that, right after that, mercy. I'm afraid that my condition has left me cold to your pleas of mercy. And then right after that, in this universe, there's one absolute everything freezes, which I would say is is Not- Batman's equivalent of. Do you know what happens when a toad is struck by lightning? <laughs> but then right after that. You get, hi, Freeze, I'm Batman. The writers ran out of jokes that quickly. (laughs) (laughs) That's how long it took. Less than ten minutes in. Hi, Freeze, I'm Batman. And then they shake hands. (laughs) And then they fight. And then Batman and Robin bust out their ice skates. That scene, what? Batman can fly, oh, and that, he goes oh, down the, the, the dinosaurs' he back. The physics make... Yeah. <laughs> what the hell? I mean, he can fly. He has the 
ability to go <laughs> to crash well, through buildings. Everyone has the ability to fly in that scene. There's a, there's a part where and Freya then, he just throws... goes down the dinosaur to take his time to get there. If what? He... Yeah, but have it too. <laughs> if he had the ability to fly, they wouldn't need the grappling hooks, which are so prominent in this movie. <laughs> Did oh, you can you explain me how when... Or they had magically had skates in <laughs> this? Oh, they just They didn't know who they were coming to fight. <laughs> yeah. Thank goodness we've got the skate shoes. Yeah, in fact, it, it, it did click need the... Heels. Thank goodness I brought my bat... Ice skates. <laughs> that would have killed it. Thank goodness. I, I will agree. George Clooney maybe should have played it a little bit straighter. I, will, uh, I, I, I think that's a, that's a that's a really think, huge concession though. Too straight. <laughs> also, and the paint scene. Go ahead. <laughs> um, I want in in that same scene, which confounds me more than the he can you know obviously Batman's aerial tricks by slide down the dinosaur. Why is it that when Bat no sorry when Robin drives through a wall on a motorcycle. <laughs> why he drives through the wall, number one. Number two, why does it leave the Robin symbol <laughs> behind him on the wall? <laughs> you would have had it leave a Robin... Sh- the shape of Robin, his body? No, of course it's going to leave the <laughs> But Robin. how? There was no mechanism on the bike. I would, I, would, I would say that, like... Having Robin crash through a wall and leaving a Robin shape would be, like, kind of a, a welcome thing in here. There's no attempt. He drives a motorcycle through a wall and then, like, the Robin shape behind him. Yeah. So There's stupid. no way physically that could happen. And it stayed in the set piece. They kept they kept showing it, like, in every scene it had to be in the background. <laughs> We're committing to this, you guys. We're not going to yeah. take it's that This is Robin's off. movie, too. <laughs> too good. No. It shouldn't be. It, should. oh it really should be. Really... Chris was not it. Didn't you have a crush on I feel such right? embarrassment. <laughs> we, I want to say scientifically, uh few of us went back and watched all of the original Batman from the Tim Burton to this, and I remember, especially Batman Forever, such a crush on Chris O'Donnell, and I am ashamed of that now, because and- <laughs> watching him in these, he was unbearable. Well, and I think going back to the 66 Batman... I, uh, a, th- a thing that really worked in the 66 Batman was was Batman and Robin's relationship, you know, being that very specific, you know, Robin just idolizing Batman and being yeah. amazed by everything Batman did. And you didn't want to strangle Robin the entire time. <laughs> and by, by the end of the first scene, I don't care about... I certainly... I, I actively dislike Robin. And I don't really care about Batman either. <laughs> there's way more... There's the, the movie does way more work trying to get you to sympathize with the villains than, than, than Batman and Robin, who you just really want to... <laughs> To, to fall into a pit and, and die. <laughs> the pacing is so weird in this movie, too. The opening sequence with Mr. Freeze was 15 minutes long. <laughs> I, I had to stop it to see how long it was because I'm like, this feels endless. And then, you know, you go just, directly to Poison Ivy scene and her stupid well, her behavior. Oh, crazy amount of exposition. Can oh, my say, gosh. Can, we, can I just say, though, John Glover was amazing as best. her boss? John Glover is always the best, and he is the perfect... The one thing you can say for these terrible Batman <laughs> movies is that the villains always, at least, are having the most fun. In this movie, it almost felt the least true. It was people kind of struggling, but John Glover, glorious. He is always. See, I don't. I don't know. I thought he, he was, was a big hot mess. No, he was so <gasps> wonderful. I, he was what he was supposed. He to absolutely be. embraced that I'm here and I'm crazy and it's fun. And I'm. I'm certainly no fan of his. I thought the only performance that was really working on the level of this movie was Arnold Schwarzenegger, <laughs> who was just screaming puns the entire time yeah. and he looking like he was it. having a blast. I actually respect. Yeah. The choice. His. He, his performance was not the fault. <laughs> it was very Otto Preminger-y from the old series. <laughs> <laughs> Wild. Can, can I, this is my favorite bit of Mr. Freeze dialogue that comes from the first, the first scene. Because <laughs> Arnold's great with the one-liners, but sometimes they give him a lot of dialogue, and you're like, no, 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 <laughs> not, not more than, not more than two sentences in a row. And so it's right after he freezes Robin. He tells Batman, can, I, I'm not going to do an, uh, an Arnold impersonation. He goes, can you be cold, Batman? You have 11 minutes to thaw the bird. What will you do? Chase the villain? Or save the boy. Your emotions make you weak. That's why this day is mine. Ha 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 ha. I'll kill you next time. Which is like, I didn't know Tommy Wiseau did punch up on this. It's so bad. But then also, I want to point out, so he gives him 11 minutes, and Batman just stands there and just kind of takes it, and Mr. Freeze walks away. Batman just picks up Frozen Robin, <laughs> drops him into a lake, and unfreezes him in, like, a minute. That's the tops. <laughs> like, and then we're done. Well, by that point, after that minute, Mr. Freeze has gotten away, so we can't follow him. And he didn't know how long it would take to 
catch Mr. Freeze, so he may have gone over the 11 minutes. <gasps> then so, I think the, then there we should been no... see some fallout with Ron. <laughs> but fortunately, <laughs> he, he was had, cold for a while. Fortunately, he has on the bat laser that apparently heats a bat of water very quickly. Yeah. It's a good thing I have my bat water heater. <laughs> it's convenient for cooking quickly. <laughs> he Okay, so that, this is what it needed. It needed him to have a few, like, it's a good thing I brought my bat, whatever. <laughs> it needed that, and it needed them climbing up the coolio could a have side been of that. a wall. Yeah, it needed <laughs> them climbing up the side of a wall and running into some cameo celebrity, which would have been a good place for Coolio. Who was Coolio does it? come in, but, but not the in a feature. This movie way. can't make up its mind whether it's campy or whether it's yeah. still whether it's still Tim Burton. Because there's serious stuff happening. It does not have. It's trying to be Tim Burton, but not understanding fundamentally why Tim Burton works and is cool. Yeah, and it's also not funny. <laughs> It is so funny. <laughs> he makes Batman and Robin make public appearances. Why do Batman and Robin make public appearances? I mean, because, the whole point is it, Batman is that he's a, reclusive. That's at a ball where Bruce Wayne is loaning, he's loaning diamonds that are being auctioned off, right? That's something yeah, like, but, but like trap to get How do you Reed. loan something that's being auctioned off? Yeah, that's what I was wondering. Anyway, we're not they're, even... They're renting it. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense. But like Bruce Wayne... Is a big part of that ball because he's loaning these these massive diamonds. But Batman and Robin are there. <laughs> like, well, how do you pick? <laughs> but Why? that is something that would have been in the old series. Burt Ward and um, that's true. They what is his name? Uh, and I feel Adam West. Thank you. I'm just bad with names. You remember I, Burt Ward? <laughs> <laughs> they totally would have made public appearances and whipped out their bat credit cards to pay Why for things. Why would they have bat credit cards? They, oh God. <laughs> They would have made public appearances that yeah, he that credit, a credit card. It, it, it would have been better. I agree. That was an opportunity for product placement. Guys, <laughs> do you know how long the back credit card is good? Tell me. Tell me. Forever. How long. Oh my God. <laughs> we know because it says it on the car. Oh my gosh. It would have been better if on stage Alfred was posing as Batman. <laughs> Which is, they did that a lot in the old series. Really? Yeah. That's hilarious. But like on a building, so you can't really I see I feel it. like the back card should, should have had that little member since. 1982 oh. or something on it as well. <laughs> oh, that would have been a nice thing. Like, remember, <laughs> since 1939, when did mm-hmm. ba- whenever Batman first started, that would have been a good point. That's a good point. We have no idea when this damn movie takes place. It's going, again, with the Tim Burton style of its, uh-huh. like, modern film noir, so it's got lots of Blade Runner style, old timiness, but then computers and lots of bat products on digital computers. But then... It's so choppy. Like, we have Alicia Silverstone and looking at a picture of her mother, who is Alfred's <laughs> sister. Can we, can we get into but that? But mom is from the 1930s, right. very clearly. <laughs> right. And Alfred is old, old. And, okay. and Alicia Silverstone is, yeah, exactly. Niece. It doesn't make any sense. <laughs> and we can start talking about Alicia Silverstone anytime. I mean, why even bother? <laughs> why even bother? Because I w- I will say- it happened and we can't deny it. It's... Alicia Silverstone playing Claire, I mean Cher, Cher. Horowitz playing Batgirl. I mean, but sure, but she was amazing at playing Cher Horowitz, and I think like re- she was funny. revisiting yeah because Alicia Silverstone in anything other funny. than Clueless just makes me sad. I'm like, oh my gosh, like, oh yeah, it doesn't stand out. You know, she was in a movie called Poison Ivy. <laughs> How's that one? Uh, I didn't watch it. <laughs> Actually, I think I did. It was bad. <laughs> but yeah, like she has this incredible talent in this movie of just sucking all the attention away from Chris O'Donnell, where you're just like, oh my god, she's she's doing a terrible job, and then disappearing from the movie. It's where you just forget she's in the movie, and Wait. then you're like, oh my god, Barbara's still in this movie. I she, forgot. Yeah, it's she was Barbara. It's Alfred's niece from England, and she's been in England for years. Yeah, and her, does, she, does she live in England? Is that she's going yeah. to school in England? Oxbridge and Academy. I feel like Oxbridge Academy, which is preposterously not realistic, and I we have no way of understanding why she would be American or mm-hmm. fifty years younger than Alfred. <laughs> I wonder if it was you know Alicia, can you can you attempt a British accent? And then she did, and they're like, Hello, <laughs> Governor, just... <laughs> it's me, Barbara. No, no, never mind. You're American. Here's another. I'll call it a uh, an echo from the old series. Okay. In the original one, when Cesar Romero played the Joker, mm-hmm. Cesar Romero refused to shave off his signature mustache, and so they just put the paint when he was the Joker over the mustache. Isn't that interesting? Mm-hmm. And here, Alicia Silverstone also refused to shave her mustache. <laughs> Does she have a mustache? I don't know if you guys know this, but in so many scenes, she was lit that there was just it, yeah. such a shadow on her upper lip. It wasn't oh her guy. It was but it so did look very like strange. Poor thing. Can you tell me? I know, I feel bad that she got picked on a lot during this movie. Like, she put on a little weight and all the 
media was getting on her for being a little, you know, overweight. I or not, thought that's she okay. looked fine. Yeah. I don't think and she, like, no. Let's give one moment to Joel Schumacher. Apparently at the time he really defended her. And good for her. Yeah, good. Yeah, like, who cares? She's a young woman. And yeah, like, I one think thing she he looked, did right during this movie. She looked great. Um, yeah, she looked lovely. Le- Besides oh. the weird shadow that looked like a mustache. <laughs> she looked fine. Yeah. Can you yeah. tell me something else about the original series? Yes. Was there also a scene with Batgirl, Robin, Batman, and Alfred where they're all standing around and kind of... The Bat family. And kind of like smiling and looking <laughs> at each other and not saying anything for a few minutes and just kind of like back and forth and we're cutting from one side of the group to the other side and no one is saying anything. You mean a scene of reaction shots? <laughs> yes, yes, just that. Oh, because yeah. this movie had it. That was weird. And if it sure. had gone on for one frame longer, it would have been Clooney turning to the camera and going... Is, are you good? Do you have all your <laughs> coverage? Can we cut? <laughs> if anyone needs me, I'll be in my trailer. My They're bat all just trailer. Standing around, we decided Barbara's going to stay, and then we're just going to stand here for a moment. I did like, while I did not like most of Chris O'Donnell's performance, mm-hmm. I did like his and Clooney's performance when they were being seduced by the pheromones. <laughs> that was so very much out of the film series. Poison and, Ivy's very. Yeah, I'm sorry, by Poison Ivy's. Absolutely pheromones. justified plants. <laughs> crossbreeding with the venom, I think it was. She's trying to crossbreed orchids with venom from snakes. Uh-huh. Right. For some reason, <laughs> yeah, I don't know what her just scientifically. I want to know what her motivation is and how she got grants to yeah. work on her. Plans. Oh my god! Did anyone write down her first line? Poison Ivy's first line in the movie. No. It's inc- <laughs> hang on. I need to find it. I wrote it down. I might have had it a little bit wrong. Her whole introduction. Okay, here is... it is. Okay, so her first line is. Drats, my experiment to mate the Dragonium Orchid and the Rattlesnakes have failed again. (laughs) What the world needs now is more rattlesnakes. But you know, there were a lot of snakes in that scene. They make me uncomfortable. And there were a lot of different kinds. Not just rattlesnakes. I don't even think there was a rattlesnake in that (laughs) scene. I think there were all other kinds of snakes. Well, Laura, when you're trying to crossbeat the plants... (laughs) So that the plants have natural defenses so against all the defen- incursion of yeah. man, you're going to need to experiment with lots of different kinds of snakes. Because yeah. this is her plan, and this is <laughs> what is a good idea. And the Wayne Corporation has given her money to do this. Also, how did they get money from the Wayne Corporation? Because on one half we have her crazy scheme, and then on the other half of the lab- laboratory out in South America, for some reason, <laughs> is John Glover's insane making of super soldier out of... How did she just, get just, so from South America to Gotham City? Right, Gotham is. It, I mean, unless Gotham City is in... South America, I mean... It's pretty really well defined is. in the United States. Yeah. And I think yeah. in Batman Forever, there was a map that showed him on the East Coast right around where New York is. So. Yeah. And she's deep in the jungle. And she gets back pretty quickly <laughs> yeah. with her new yeah, crazy plant powers. And, and, oh. and, you know, they, and no one notices the two of them. And that, that scene oh, where... I love that. That's amazing. So John Glover makes Bane, and she <laughs> kills John Glover and gets him for a henchman. And then there's a scene where they're flying into Gotham Airport, and we have a photograph of it. And that's how we know. <laughs> was there. And that, I, that was a moment of, like, I want to think that's cute and winky and kitsch when it's a black and white and it's ridiculous. It was ex- it was ba- Bane with his giant luchador mask and just, like, a fedora kind of taco. <laughs> and, and, like, the, oh my God. the Casablanca type plane. It there. was so preposterous. Was, well, and then there's that scene of her in the cab, like, very carefully putting on her wig and making sure she looks, you know, different. <laughs> and then it just cuts over to Bane wearing his luchador mask and a fedora <laughs> driving the cab. No one's questioning. <laughs> I I like the character of Poison Ivy in the Batman series a lot. Yeah, Uma Thurman just <laughs> did not know what to do in this movie. Uma Thurman was great. No, I disagree. She was terrible. She was fun. I'm oh my sure, god. I'm not sure what to believe because I really like Uma Thurman. I like her crazy Mae West way she's talking, no, but it's, it's like so it's badly a done. Fifteen year old in a high school play is trying to do a Mae West impersonation. <laughs> but I, I'm not sure if it's her fault or if it's just. All her I mean, there's so many great lines. Can we can we keep going going through great lines that that Please. characters say as we come upon them? Are you going to make a defense for the movie if you keep talking about these great lines? No, but yeah, I think you're going to win yourself over. I, so she she says after um, when she comes back, you know, right before she kills the John Glover character, she goes, "They filled my lips with venom, and I should have mentioned earlier." I'm poison, which is just saying the same thing twice. <laughs> <laughs> Two sentences that are the same thing, the exact same thing. 
It's so stupid. <laughs> I wouldn't necessarily presume. All right, your lips are filled with venom. That's nice. How's that affect me? Oh, you're poison. Well, and I wish he had mentioned that earlier. <laughs> well, if the venom is contained in the lips, then you're going to be fine. It's only if they're kind of... If they're you like, think that's just what Botox is, essentially? Like, isn't it? It's, it's the tox <laughs> and Botox. Venom in it. Can so you if you about... kiss someone with Botox lips, mm-hmm. you're gonna—I think that's true. Die, and it's really no, interesting. No, because it doesn't come out. It doesn't come out the pores. That's oh, what she's saying. The venom is. Maybe. But she's a whole apparently. Yes. <laughs> she turned into a supervillain the way everyone turns into a supervillain yeah. in this. I had written down franchise. this is this is a shitty version of Catwoman. <laughs> like yes. basically, she got Slash. licked to life by plants. But everybody, her it's... boss kills her. She gets yeah, licked yeah. to life by plants. And yeah, we can mention how the ladies are both exactly the same, like the mousy, disconnected yeah, before, who, that. thank goodness, turned into a super sexy. Oh, maybe, maybe that's know. what, like, doesn't, and watching watching all four of the 90s movies, like, back to back to back, what doesn't sit well about Uma Thurman is that Michelle Pfeiffer did it so much better yeah, than Batman Returns. Part of it. Uh, she I had more of a point. Yeah, no, I, don't, I did not hate her what she was doing. But in every single movie, the villain becomes the villain by the vat of chemicals. <laughs> yes. It started with the Joker and ever since. So... Freeze you falls know, into cold chemicals. You know, it kind of reminds me of, like, oh my gosh, the best <laughs> the best moment of performance in the entire movie is when <laughs> the security footage of Freeze falling into the vat of chemicals, hearing Arnold go, Wah! and he falls into the, the, the vat of chemicals. It's so bad. <laughs> It's kind of like on Smallville, where everything was from Meteor Rocks. Every freaking person's... <laughs> oh, but you forgot that. that the intro to that part where um, he falls in, where they're watching the security footage. <laughs> That's great acting. Where um, George Clooney's Batman goes, here's where everything goes north. <laughs> what the hell? There's a North Pole and there's a South Pole, and, and I think cold. yeah, and they're, they're more cold. cold. So I mean, but and when I you're in the think... United States, when you you go like birds, you go south for the winter because it's warmer toward but the equator. You don't go all the north. United States. We have the phrase "everything <laughs> goes south," but that means things go badly. <laughs> Uh, Isn't that what he's trying to say? Yeah. Yes, but it goes it's, because you go it's north like for cooler weather. He's jealous winter. of all the funny ice puns this freeze guy's been doing. He <laughs> yeah. wants to try one out, and That's it goes exactly bad. Exactly what it was. It just falls. Did back. it go north? It totally went north <laughs> to Canada. <laughs> so with the with the poison ivy, damn scenes, Canadians. <laughs> with the poison ivy scenes, especially sometimes with like the freeze action scenes, but really with the poison ivy scenes, you realize that this movie was made. Just right before crappy CGI kind of took <laughs> over every movie of this caliber. Mm-hmm. And so, like, instead of having cool vines, like, not cool, they would never look cool, but, like, having crappy CGI vines coming out of her, they filmed it at Rainforest Cafe. <laughs> you know, it's just, like, really and stupid so looking sets. The vines over her head. <laughs> freeze looks like, I mean, like, the free scenes look like they're filmed at Disneyland. They're <laughs> just, like, a mess of, like, really cheap looking sets. I don't mind the cheap looking sets, <laughs> and I'll tell you why, but I bet you can predict the answer. That's what the sets look like in the old series. <laughs> it's that, colorful and cheap and... And that I could be okay with. Mm. There is a... You know, I say this a lot on these, but there's a version of the movie that can work. There's the campy, yeah, brightly and, and, we, and we watched it. I... You know, that's... I feel like with a few changes, maybe a lot of changes, like you could do the campy, big, funny Batman, and you could even do it with a lot of sincerity and big stakes. Like this movie's got a lot of serious plot points, but you could do it. But this one just doesn't... It reached that point. It, it doesn't could know have been doing. edited some. It was it did clock in at two hours and ten minutes with a way overly long motorcycle chase yeah. scene. That... <laughs> and I think, out of fairness, you couldn't make that movie in this franchise because this was a continuation of the Tim Burtons. And in reality, you have no business making the big cartoony Batman <laughs> if you are in fact the same series as those. Like, go make your own you separate might have Batman a point, movie. But Joel Sch- Joel Schumacher didn't have a chance to do the reboot. <laughs> This wasn't in the time where we do a we Spider-Man reboot. reboot three years after the previous one. This was in a time where you're like, oh, once you reboot it, this is this generation's Batman. So that was his chance. <laughs> From what I understand, though, after Batman Returns, like, they were looking for definitely a soft, uh, definitely a tonal reboot, you know, like, oh. and what... Oh, really? That was studio-driven? Yeah. That's crazy. But Batman what... Returns is the best one. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. <laughs> it's, but, but what what from the Tim Burton movies... Like really carries over even that Alfred. The, <laughs> Aside from Alfred, Alfred. The, it's the it's the, the Michael Goff series, the gothic noir style, but taken even farther, the arc- even bigger statues. The oh my gosh, the statues in this were just nuts. <laughs> it was a, a car was driving off of a finger. Those were gigantic. I love those statues. 
It's like, we're going to, the scene of the Statue of Liberty, we can do bigger. Right in the middle of the city, for no reason, you guys are going to oh, be amazing. Oh, you, what, the, the observatory? The observatory? I don't understand the, I don't understand how the observatory works. There's, first off, there, one of the set pieces is this big observatory where crap goes down later, though I'm still not sure what. But if you look, ah, oh, the logistics of this thing, it's the observatory directly in the middle of downtown where you always have observatories it is being held up by a statue the statue is on top of a mountain and we see people people like fall down off the mountain into mountain landscape but it's in the middle of the city (laughs) i didn't even think about that i don't understand (laughs) well and then also the demographics of gotham you have these people in these these street racers and these (laughs) kind of weird what painted faces? I don't yeah, even know what crazy. We're not talking about gangs. the gangs. Yeah, there are there gangs. Yeah, and Coolio is their leader. And one little kid. One small child. <laughs> and apropos to the world of Batman, who's got colorful supervillains. Of course, there are absolutely colorful street gangs. <laughs> There's the powdered wig gang. <laughs> There's the clockwork orange gang. <laughs> oh, Coolio is the leader, right? Was the, he the leader? That makes sense. Yeah. He's, He's the good. only black man in Gotham, he, he so it was, makes sense he that he was part of the black light gang. Yeah. Like, once they step out of Blacklight, they're powerless. These villains love Blacklight. (laughs) That was awesome. Anywhere they can, their lair is just covered in it. It doesn't matter when we go perpetrate crime, we have to take Blacklights with us, or else (laughs) this means nothing. That's where they do all their crimes, is the back part of Spencer Gifts, where they have all the Blacklight stuff. (laughs) But then they just come out with dildos and crazy (laughs) bachelorette party toys. You guys, this isn't going to fetch as much in the black market as you think. (laughs) But on the Blacklight market... (laughs) <laughs> no, that didn't make sense. Oh, uh, what, what else? <laughs> Guys, Batman has a love interest that we find out halfway through the movie. He always, <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he always has a love interest in these movies. This is the first time it had absolutely no point. Yeah, and there was a scene just, I mean, they spent it had a, point. a minute and a half or t- close, maybe two minutes on them eating dinner and her talking about wanting to settle down with him. Which is... I mean, now with that, we know George Clooney a little better, too. It's just like having a scene where a woman's like, I need you to settle down, and he's like, eh. Eh. She, she That wasn't it. even in the script, you guys. <laughs> she took it very well. Do you think they had a scene, they, they filmed a scene where she was all sad about it, and they're like, Al McPherson, you can't act. You're going to take it just fine. That must be what it is. Because in every other movie, the I mean, we had too many characters, so obviously we can't put in the reasonable love interest. But everyone had a point. Batwo- uh, Catwoman was interesting, and... Mm. Vicky Vale was cool and high powered and driven, and Nicole Kidman at least was a doctor. <laughs> but now, More Ellen, crucial to the plot. Yeah, in now Ellen Pearson is just here to whine. It was, it was like they got through the movie and like, shoot, we didn't give him a love interest. Oh no! But I will say this: at least Elle McPherson got to speak. Vendela, who you guys are probably too young, but she was a pretty big model at the time. She was Nora Freeze stuck in the thing the whole time. She's in a water tube. I thought her performance was oh. spectacular. It, w- it was really good. She had the best performance in the movie. <laughs> That's true. I thought she was kind of sleepy. Well, you know, she didn't do much, but she made it really yeah, effective. Because she's dying with Peter's disease. And... Not as sleepy as Lizzie Silverstone. <laughs> Well, I mean, and then Poison Ivy is campy, you know, pretty, she she kills, like, she kills Dr. Woodrow, who kind of deserves, like, he's asking for it because he's kind of messing around and stuff. Which one is he? Oh, he's the John Glover. Who essentially kills her after. Yeah. Yeah. So he did it. You know, she's just kind of a campy villain. Like, she doesn't really, she's not really threatening. But then, in the middle, towards the end, she, when, you know, Mr. Freeze wants his wife to be transported oh, yeah. to, you know, their new lair. She says, oh, I'll take care of her. And she decides to just kill her. Pull the plug, <laughs> Pull the plug on her. It's uncharacteristic. It's we need, very... We, don't, yeah. we need a reason to turn on her at yeah, the end, I guess. I don't know. We just I just kind of feel bad about her. Yeah. Kind of for just the fact that she's a villain who's murdering people. Like, that's no big deal. But now... She's is she, a, is she murdering a ton of people? I don't remember. She's well, a femme fatale. I guess not who really. Is, she's just like... By the end, we, we're definitely She's meant just no really sexualized woman. I feel threatened by that. Exactly. So. Oh, can her puns? Her puns get dirty. <laughs> they get really dirty. <laughs> yeah, and it's out of nowhere because her motivation is so unclear. Apparently, she comes back and wants to wants to make plants 
the dominant species on the planet, I guess. I think yeah. but it's her goal. Wants, but she's okay with freezing but, over. But she's going to team up with Freeze, whose goal is diametrically opposed to hers. Especially yes. if she's got... <laughs> That's true. Especially if she's got these snake plants, because snakes are cold-blooded, too. So they're really not going to be so uncomfortable when she like, was trying to make out with that plant in the little... Yeah. The little yeah. It seems like she would not care, but then suddenly she's threatened by Mr. Freeze's wife. Like, oh, I, this is a one-woman show. And like, that, that, like yeah. she wants to get... With Mr. Freeze, but what it feels like it comes up nowhere for her character. Well, it's because they get Cause more than a quarter catty. of the way into the movie and they haven't decided why Poison Ivy's bad exactly. I don't think they would know why anyone's She's just bad. Crazy. She she is, but like you I mean, like, we were introduced to her as this really just this pathetic scientist. And then like she almost gets murdered, like she almost gets like molested, and then like out of that, Poison Ivy's born. That's like that's a superhero origin story. <laughs> and then we're just supposed to believe she's a bad guy because she's supposed to be a bad guy. <laughs> Up until around the point she, like, knocks Nora's too bad. They're like, oh, okay, she's bad. That's probably That's bad. Yeah. Before, she just felt like she was... Whereas, like, Mr. Good. Freeze is murdering people left and right. <laughs> Which, okay, what's the science behind the freezing? So if you get frozen, <laughs> you're okay as long as you get thawed out. But if you get knocked over, minutes. you can be shattered. <laughs> is it 11 minutes? Well, that was how long... They said the timetable, if Mr. Freeze freezes people, yeah. They have 11 minutes. 11 so by the end of the movie, they have 11 apparently. minutes. Apparently. Oh, got it, got it. And his... Uh, I want to feel that his storyline is sympathetic. Like, in theory, <laughs> he's stealing things to get money for research to cure his wife's Magruder disease. <laughs> but he's <laughs> giving things... But he's yeah. doing it really... You could use the diamonds that you're stealing <laughs> this is true. to fund that. How about, how and about, also, no reputable... Laboratory is going to support you, and uh, well, <laughs> but like, and that's the sympathetic thing about Freeze is he needs money, and like you just see Batman, who's our hero, just spending in excess. <laughs> Did you see the Batcave? It's stupid, ridiculous. How 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 many frills there are? In oh, that. you guys, there are neon lights on the Batmobile now, <laughs> and it's like you know nobody's going to see it. It's just you two, right? You don't need to have this big exactly. presentation no, every time. Three people, the three <laughs> spoilers, four people can see the Batcave in the movie. And that's it, you know? And then at the end, Bruce is like, well, we got to make more room in the Batcave. Why don't you just sell some of your shit and you'll be fine? <laughs> and in the beginning, we have to wait while the Batmobile rises up out of the ground yeah. and Bat and Robin's motorcycle, like, huh, with, 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 the, with the dual neon yeah. Robin logos. Yeah, so why don't you just park them there? Like, now, they're not the way. Think... Just, you'd be ready to go. This takes forever. There's now, crime. Wait. Now, they don't know there was crime yet because the commissioner hadn't called them. There might be, a, like, a special oh, one where it out. shoots up. <laughs> when do they when do they pick their vehicles? Because by the end, so stupid. You have Batman driving the Batmobile. You have Batgirl driving her Batgirl cycle, and you have Robin driving the most ridiculous snowmobile I've ever seen in my Robin life. Robin deserves it. I think that <laughs> Robin all his whining got I him mean, younger. If anything, just give him a sidecar on Batgirl's motorcycle, and that's way more Robin. All his bitchy jealousy with Batman, and like I want to be cut down on my own. They're like, I forgive you, but you get the crappy snowmobile. But there's that scene we talked about it briefly earlier where. <laughs> Over Rob, where Batman overrides Robin's controls and cuts his bike while they're doing that. Where they're oh, doing the one CGI thing. Huh? Yeah, I mean, that's just... And it you know stops what? inches from the edge. He cuts them because it's too dangerous, because he wants to go after Freeze. And exactly. That, no, that's dangerous. Oh, that was, yeah, that was unnecessary. <laughs> he cuts it, and he almost spins out and dies anyway. You know, can we go back to... When they name? go into Mr. Freeze's lair, and mm. then but uh, Poison Ivy and Mr. Freeze are there at the same time. When they're trying to concoct the plan of getting Mr. Freeze's wife, okay. it's Nora, right? No. Nora mm -hmm. Freeze. Nora Freeze. Um, out actually. of there. It, so Batman and Robin, they separate, which is always a bad idea. Anyway, mm -hmm. um, actually, they don't. They go, because they go in the same, but the you have your the police officers in that one room, and Mr. Mm -hmm. Freeze freezes them, and then Batman and Robin go after Poison Ivy. And they so they get to her, well, they think they got to her, and then they say, no beauty. Just be <laughs> the two of them say it together. It's so do bad. they say it simultaneously? No, no. Batman says okay, no beauty, and then Robin just finishes the just the beast. beast. Oh, <laughs> hey, they're the perfect team. They can finish each other's well, yeah. sandwiches. Sandwiches. I was going to say. Sandwiches. Um, no, that wasn't what I was going to say. But it was a scene with Freeze and Poison Ivy together when she reveals that Nora's dead. Uh -huh. You know, and she blames it on Batman. He is legitimately sad. For about sixty seconds before he's <laughs> full of puns again, <laughs> like I'm going. But now they're rage I'm puns. going to ice my Batman and Robin now. <laughs> I think the puns were part of the mutation, whatever we want to call his thing. Oh, okay. Like, that's part of it. So he was can't, he bitten he can't by a radioactive pun writer? 
So puns are obviously top billing in this movie. <laughs> like they're they're the star. They should be over Arnold Schwarzenegger on the when we're, when we're like really getting getting right down to the end of the movie, you get puns like Hey Freeze, the heat is on. Like these are the last puns in the movie. You lost, Freeze. I think not. Bombs away, Batman. Like, you're not going to go for one of your puns there. Like, you, you think you, you freeze in hell, Batman. That doesn't even make any sense, you know? Actually, it literally makes... actually Dante's Inferno, it was very cold. Hell. There oh. is okay. the best line, I think, towards the end of the movie. And it's where Batman tells Robin... She wants to kill you, Dick. And, <laughs> yes. And you think, because I forgot that Robin's name is Dick. Is Dick. And so I thought, oh wow, he's actually calling what? Robin a Dick. It's he is a dark. Dick. <laughs> I like to imagine that George Clooney and Chris O'Donnell did not get along during the filming, and that was the one moment he just got to let all of his fun and go. Like, no, 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 you're you're not mad at him right now, Batman. No, I am. <laughs> I hope she kills you, <laughs> dick. <laughs> you guys, Barbara finds the Batcave. Oh, man. She does this because Alfred's dying. Great thing to have in the campy, funny Batman movie. <laughs> <laughs> the best part of the series. It, it, okay. <laughs> and so she's got these mad computer skills that she learned at Oxford Academy. <laughs> so she steals the secret CD-ROM that Alfred's sending to his brother off in India. And she guesses the password. <laughs> she's really good at guessing passwords, you guys. <laughs> she is. She yeah. tries England. <laughs> she tries Wayne. <laughs> and eventually she gets there. And then she finds the Batcave. And by the way, I don't know. All my passwords are not just whatever Things my are... Even if it is something personal <laughs> to me, it's always whatever it is, one. Or <laughs> so easy, people oh, so can easily have one. I'll wear one. <laughs> look around the room. And say, <laughs> We're going to edit this part out. <laughs> my password is not one. <laughs> yeah. And Alfred has apparently downloaded his personality into the computer. Yeah, uh, mixed, with Max, it, 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 mixed with Max Headroom. His Max Headroom, <laughs> and Alfred and Barbara is talking to it as no, Uncle Alfred, it's me. <laughs> <laughs> She's talking to the computer. She's very computer savvy, but does not realize. I want to see all the alternate universe like movies <laughs> where we find out what else Alfred's programmed this computer to do. Like who, <laughs> Commissioner Gordon? I didn't think you'd be down. I figured one day you'd find yourself down he here. He sat down one day and recorded all these scenarios. Like I, I mean. If he Just recorded it for his niece, who's in who's in England, Joker. Uh, but he yeah. knew she'd find it, and he <laughs> Joker her back to life, and you somehow found it. <laughs> he, That's like that. Sorry, do you remember? No, you, you ever see that sketch of um, on SNL? It was Tom Brokaw doing because he yes. <laughs> Oh, what is it like? Uh, former Harlem drummer Carter was mauled by bears over the weekend. Just because he was like going to take a vacation, but in case, <laughs> in case something, and it was I guess based on a real story. Anyway, sorry, that that would have been awesome. Just having a scene of him recording every possible permutation. Yeah. <laughs> And I want to know why he is comfortable sending he's prepared a Batgirl costume for her. <laughs> why he feels this is an inevitable scenario, and of course I should send her out to fight crime too. Yeah, what, yeah. what and has she done up until that point? She's good with motorcycles. She took down Robin. Yeah, yeah she, she. Oh my gosh, her her yeah as she like takes down Robin yeah. is amazing. It's <laughs> so bad. Oh, and I'm sorry, but. The, her costume is kind of perverted. That Alfred designed that her for uncle her. designed for her to accentuate the lower region of and her body the and the, the, the close shots of her body. Yeah, if, if, oh, anything was gonna, if anything was going to be uh, more ridiculous than the bat nipples on Batman and Robin, it had to have been the boobs on the bat. Thank girl goodness there were no oh, and the butt nipples. and the frontal <laughs> lower region shot too. Because remember, it cuts in right there. There was another part over. She should have had bat toe. <laughs> and also an official. An official Oh god. <laughs> An official part of the Batgirl costume is like she wears heels too? Like, <laughs> it's a terrible choice. What the hell? Oh, well, every good costume needs a good pair of heels to go with it. I like Batgirl. That's not very PC. <laughs> no, no, person. Bruce, it's me. <laughs> it's me. Barbara, I found the Batcave. Oh my god. And, we, and then we the movie just... does the really smart thing of pairing Batgirl and Robin together for the rest of the movie because we really needed those they two to be in every... No. <laughs> and it's embracing their creepy, skeevy Robin when they're getting on top of Barbara. Like, uh, let's just start with that. But, but do they really just bring her in so she can kick Poison Ivy's ass so the boys don't have to beat up a woman? Because is that really, really horribly what it is? Because, yeah, she flies in and beats up Poison Ivy and in showing... And the whole time they talk about how they're both women. It's just... Yeah, it's just ladies. And for the rest of the movie, every every scene Batgirl's in, every bit of banter is about how she's a girl. It's so... 
<laughs> oh my god. Going back to because I did note all these things, I just want to. I want to talk about all the things that were like the old series and the Dutch angles. <laughs> so many Dutch angles. Yeah. Okay. In fact, I just I was recording it to watch as like a refresher before I did. I haven't watched it, but I think I watched like a sixty second stretch. Every shot was a Dutch angle. But, but by the time you get to the nineties, the Dutch angle means something so much. It's something so much more different than it did in the sixties. You know, like. The, it really kind of informed the campiness of the 66 Batman series. By the time you get to the 90s, it means, like, crappy sci-fi <laughs> stuff. And that, like, that's what it feels like in Batman and Robin. Oh. It's just like, oh, look how askew this terrible-looking set is. Look how, <laughs> like, askew these awful neon lights are. <laughs> and something it was missing, it was missing the the sound effect cards, like your pow and your bam. Yeah. But it did have some pretty funny sound. There were some but he hilarious only sound effects. Added them halfway through the movie. <laughs> they, 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 <laughs> the first half doesn't have them, and then suddenly we're pow, char. <laughs> <laughs> like there was one like. <laughs> there, I wrote this here, teaching goons to sing. Yes. When, uh, what was that? <laughs> Mr. Freeze has oh, all of his Mr. henchmen <laughs> singing to the Rankin and Bass. <laughs> that's uh, right. That's right. <laughs> which I is maybe the closest Mr. Freeze. Gets to to working like I actually really enjoyed that scene, yeah. even though it looks terrible to be one of his henchmen. They're just oh yeah, being forced frozen to stay food. frozen food that they can't get into. Yeah, how about the peeing dog? The dog group is peeing. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, Poor Vivica Fox. Oh, do they, does he have less than eleven minutes? Does he have whatever that is in dog years? <laughs> <laughs> yes. And guys, I heard this on another podcast that maybe we don't want to include it, but someone pointed out that Mr. Freeze needs to stay in his ice suit to keep himself cool enough to survive. When he gets to his ice cave, he puts on clothes that make him warmer. <laughs> <laughs> his and, he, and, and he's yes. smoking a cigar. He's smoking a cigar. <laughs> and hey, Jesse Ventura was in this movie. That was pretty awesome. Was he? Yeah, he was, was one of the guards movie. at Arkham. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Yeah. But what are the yes, pointless guards? The loom, yeah. And who aren't suspicious of um, Poison Ivy in her green, you know, pantsuit and her fiery red hair. <laughs> oh, <laughs> and they and they let her walk in. Well, she's about the pheromones. You, you are talking about faces. you are talking about a place that at the end. Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> you can go for it. No. You, oh, take they it away. put him in the same room. Yeah, they put the two <laughs> people, villains. No matter how you slice it, either they hate each other, in which case they're going to kill each other, or they were pretty successful crime duo. They're going to work together and do something, but they're put in the same freaking cell. That, and, the, and they're opposite genders. That was actually not what I was going to say. But oh, on, sorry. on that note, though, like at that point, Poison Ivy just broken. And I mean, like again, we talk about her her origin story. You feel bad for her, and then it's like, oh sweet, Freeze is going to kick her ass. <laughs> You're like, what? No, I'm not behind this at all. But Arkham apparently has a lab that Mister Freeze can work on, working while he's locked away. <laughs> what does that even mean? We're transferring your your, your comatose wife. To Arkham, so you could be with her and and work on making her better while you're locked away. It doesn't make any sense. Doctor Hugo Strange is a very <laughs> interesting <laughs> warden. He makes a lot of interesting decisions. That man's such a good guy. But this, this was the first in this series where there was no Bat voice. George Clooney was both. Yeah, he had a Bat voice. Yeah, he was all. He had the same voice whether he was. Uh, Bruce Wayne or Batman. I thought that was Batman, Man About Town. Just like Batman Adam West. Adam. <laughs> just like well, Adam West. Adam West man. already has a Batman voice. Okay. But George Clooney is just doing his Dr. Ross or whatever from you. <laughs> there was a really good musical cue when Freeze points his gun. Does nobody else remember? I wrote it, but I don't even remember myself. But it was fun. Let me cut this out. This music was like a weird mishmash of like really, you know, like horns blaring 1966 Batman oh, bang pow. But also, like, Danny Elfman, Tim Burton. So it would, like, you'd get whiplash from, like, <laughs> big horns while people are getting punched to, like, the like the Danny Elfman type score. It was weird. <laughs> Any other big things we need to talk about? Um, where do you hear that score? Is it at the end when Mr. Freeze is trying <laughs> to enact his master plan to freeze the world with satellites? Or are they trying to fill the world with satellites? Oh, uh, God. That? They did both. He tried to freeze it with satellites, and they tried. And they thought, they it, thought it with it satellites because yeah. <laughs> he goes up to the observatory, and now work. that his wife is dead, he's going to seek revenge, and he's going to freeze Gotham mm-hmm. first, Gotham, then the, the, world, the world, and they're going to use these twelve satellites that they happily introduced earlier in the movie in an equally unexplainable scientific That's way. That's good screenwriting. As well. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow the satellites are going to freeze the world. Mm-hmm. 
And so he freezes Gotham, and then happily our heroes get there, and they're just going to change around the computer. And now we're going to use the satellites to bounce off the sun and thaw the city. Uh huh. So that dog can finish his peeing. I don't understand <laughs> the plan. I don't think it works that way. Science. So, yeah, it's science. <laughs> uh, it's good stuff. Is it good stuff? Is that the answer? Apropos of nothing. There were two actors in this movie who is well, one's an actor and one was a cameo. Who, as far as I know, they were the only two people to be in both this series and the uh, Christopher Nolan Batman mm-hmm. series. Do you, do you know the actor Nicky Cat? He was on. Did you ever watch Boston Public? There's an actor called Nicky Cat who was on Boston Public, who was a henchman in this, and he was a cop in. I want to say Batman Begins, and that was cool. And also Senator Patrick Leahy was in both this movie. He was in a crowd scene. Uh, early on, and then he was also in the Christopher Nolan Batman's. Oh, and Tom Hardy played Bane in both Batman and Robin <laughs> and The Dark Knight Rises. <laughs> I'm not 100. We'll have to. We'll check. We'll check IMDb. What's He's that? lying. He's lying. Did he play the skinny, weird little version of the Bane, or the big Hulk out version? Well, they, after they, he got injected with the they, they they stopped filming. He and then he. he he gained a lot of... Okay. Or did he play him again at the end when they pull out the tube feeding the... Is that seriously it to kill Bane, by the and way? And then he does not die. That's kind of a He hint. shrinks back to his original size <laughs> and runs away with a crying baby noise. Oh, by the way, this is the most terrifying... <laughs> that, that does happen. <laughs> this is the, the most terrifying serial killer ever. <laughs> it's this little, this little dweeby guy. <laughs> so stupid. There, there were two things that kind of bothered me about the movie. Just two? Oh, just, yeah, just, just two. Just two. Just two. Because it was very silly when they had the part where Mr. Freeze does cry, his ice tear that turns this tear that turns an ice. That was ripped off from the yeah. animated series where they did it so much better. I was where it was. Uh, yes, I'm sorry, I stole <laughs> you. No, no, you're absolutely right. right. I was stealing it from you, but okay. yes, you're absolutely right. And the personification of Bane, who is very smart and urbane in the you know and everything else, and then for to have him be like that, I am glad he wasn't just a muffled John Connery impression. <laughs> I will say that, but he was just where uh, where did Bane get his name from? He gets he gets filled up with venom, and then immediately he go he screams Bane. Didn't they say like he was going to be the Bane of the world? Yeah, I thought oh, he was they, so he's just he was just repeating what they said. That's, yeah. that's okay. he did a lot Which of repeating. Did. Okay. I like what is words. That? enough of this monkey business. Let's get down to work. Monkey work. <laughs> oh my gosh! No, Mr. Freeze has a moment like that. Does he? There's a there's a moment where Mr. Freeze Mr. Freeze reads a headline that says Bruce Wayne loans diamonds to Ball, and, and Arnold reads it Bruce Wayne diamonds. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! But okay, so yeah, there's so two two songs come out of this movie. One of them's a really good Smashing Pumpkins song that plays over the credits. And then immediately afterwards is an inexplicable R. R. Kelly song about Gotham City that isn't really about Gotham City. <laughs> he was probably talking about the New York Gotham City. <laughs> Wait, that makes- uh, anything, any other big things? Batgirl's line to Poison Ivy, you're about to become compost. <laughs> oh, I, I like... um long is fun. She had, she had, what is it? She had nice stems, though. <laughs> and nice buds. What are the buds? Oh, you know what the buds are. I'm assuming they're boobs, but buds are small. It implies she had small boobs. Is her thumb the only part of her that's green? <laughs> <laughs> she had she had like fingernail things on her gloves too. <laughs> but poison ivy's puns, like I said earlier, get really dirty at one point. Oh like, yeah. She goes, My garden needs tending. <laughs> and then she goes, <laughs> That was pretty good. Some lucky boy's about to hit the honey pot. <laughs> so and then and then we haven't even talked about how Wait. she strips out of a gorilla suit. <laughs> Honey pot is not plant related. <laughs> oh, no, I'm sorry. Oh yes, yeah, the gorilla suit. I mean, that's it. She strips out of a gorilla suit, folks. It's it's really weird, and everyone's really tr- like transfixed on it, like right away. Even though it's just a a person in a gorilla suit dancing. There, there was a music cue. That's Very just, slight music cue, yeah. and suddenly everyone turns away from Batman and his diamonds too. And it's, this and then, weird thing. And then the the pheromone gas comes out of her. And, and people start laying down in front of her so she can walk on their backs, which isn't really convenient for anyone. <laughs> like, it's not more convenient for her. It's, it's got to be harder to walk. It would probably be better just to get out of the way. Like, they're not bridging the gap or anything. <laughs> oh, I loved her pheromone stuff. Oh, it was fun. so... But every single time it was always the blowing out of the hand. Mm-hmm. It was like, you've done that a million times. Get another trick. And at what point does Robin shake himself of the pheromone gas? Because where he acts like an ass for 
the whole like the entire time until he has his little quip about the rubber lips and pulls them off. <laughs> well, okay, what are rubber lips? Can someone tell me that? Is it just <laughs> did he just put that rubber lips <laughs> something over his lips and then pull yeah. them off? And, it's and a Batman moment, product. Yeah. It comes from that Batman moment is a, a very sixty six Batman it moment. Was. It's appropriate, but the setup is absolutely not. The setup makes no <laughs> sense. It's just like oh, we're oh, thank God we're gonna watch Robin get killed now, and he. Yeah, apparently he was smart the entire time, but was just being a dick to Batman for fun. And why didn't she, being still inches from him, after he pulled off the plastic lips, just kiss him again? (laughs) Well, because she knew she could just push him into the very shallow water. (laughs) Oh Oh, my goodness! (laughs) You tell it. Oh goodness! And so he's in the water, trapped by plants, I suppose, while Batman comes in and is fighting her off. There is a scene where he's struggling and, like, his head kind of comes out of the water. And in the very same, they reverse the footage and his head goes back <laughs> really into the water. Really it's really a very really clear. He comes see. up and then back in. And immediately, then, same shot, just in reverse. And then later on, his head comes out of the water. I'm not 100% sure, but I think that was the same. His head <laughs> yeah, it did. Yeah. I love that. It's just like, of course... Uh, aside from that, of course, that's what would get Robin is shallow water in plants. <laughs> He's not a strong swimmer. <laughs> Robin's Robin's best hero moment comes later when Batgirl goes, "What should we do now?" And Robin goes, "Pray." <laughs> in a in a moment of crisis, Robin turns to Jesus, <laughs> like Carrie Underwood. <laughs> uh, that's why he's only the sidekick. <laughs> Oh boy! And I, I was wondering because there's that there's that shot, the obligatory shot at the end, where where we have Batman, Robin, and then Batgirl running at the camera, and it's starting to look really, really crowded. And so I'm wondering, oh, like, boy. and and if Joel Schumacher had gotten a third movie, like, <laughs> would Dick Grayson have become Nightwing, and would we have I'm gotten a, a Tim Drake, and would we have had like Robin, Nightwing? Batgirl and Batman running, and then, like, the next movie would we have added, like, Green Arrow or someone, and just, like, kept kept adding on to it. And not to be the dead horse, but that running toward the camera thing, 66 Batman series thing, that was... That's cool, and they do it in the others, and sort of thing they're establishing. Mm -hmm. Oh, you guys, I could not remember how uh, Alfred's storyline ended. I was really... I thought I remembered that he died, and I was really hopeful for a minute. Because that would have been really cool and dark. Because you hate Alfred. I love Alfred, but that is a cool, dark, Batman-y thing. I forgot what movie I was watching. I I can't... I don't even know what would have been more appropriate to the tone, either. Because by then, I'm like, is this... But it's so appropriate that, oh my gosh, he's dying of the McGregor disease that uh, Mr. Freeze's wife has. Was it McGregor? It was McGregor's. I like calling McGregor disease. Okay, Oh my gosh! And he's dying of it. And in exchange for them taking Mr. Freeze to Arkham Asylum to work in the lab, he just requires a cure... For stage one, yeah. McGruder, <laughs> McGregor's, <laughs> McGregor's disease that Mr. Freeze has on him. And his wife. Like, God, yeah. how, how does one get that? <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's made up. <laughs> but he's, he walks around with an antidote for stage one McGregor's, but he and what, can't so what, fix his wife. So what stage of his wife must be stage? Did they say a number? I don't, I'm i sure they did or did not, and it doesn't but if, matter. But if Alfred is this bad at he's stage dying. one, he's she terminal. must be double dead stage or something. One. He is double dead. <laughs> And, and they turn Freeze around by saying, like, oh, look, Poison Ivy was being a, a jerk to you the whole time. At that point, why doesn't Batman or, or Robin or Batgirl just start shouting at him? Like, she was lying to you, by the way. Like, as he's, like, tri- triangulating all the satellites, as he's doing everything. Like, why aren't they just throwing videos at him? Because I'm sure they have the tech to do that. They'd obviously run out of puns by that point. I mean... <laughs> and they don't know how to communicate. Right. But there puns. were a lot of puns in the movie that could see that they've exhausted them. There That's were, fair. like, a handful of puns and a lot of attempts at puns. Mm-hmm. This is true. Just throwing in the word cold every once in a while. And a little bit of that. <laughs> Poison Ivy has one where she goes... No, she, we, keep, we keep wrapping up and then... Yeah. Oh, wait, but this! <laughs> we forgot so about much. this part! Wait, 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 hang on. I need to find it. Because it's stupid. Oh, why are you doing that? You know what I really loved? You know, speaking of the the Robin, the prey scene, Batman, spoiler alert, Batman does save them. With all of a sudden, his grappling hook thing becomes made out of bungee. Yeah. And it has not been bungee up until <laughs> this point, because he goes all the way down, grabs them, and comes back up. And, and your point about the bat grappling hook, where it there's lots of scenes of it 
flying and connecting the things and yeah. millions of grappling hooks in this movie. No endless supply. The one of the very last ones goes straight through wall yeah. and then somehow sticks on the other side yeah. to that wall. It doesn't open up without opening either. up, yeah. without changing anything. And now yeah, so you're thinking like whatever force now Batman's going down. Mm-hmm. The thing's shooting up, so it had enough force to go through. And then it would have... I'm doing demonstrations, which obviously the podcast audience can't hear. But then you're thinking when it does hit the end, it should yank the hell out of that. So there should be a lot more force coming through on the other side, but it stays through. Stays impossibly. He's got some good toys. Where does he get those wonderful toys? (laughs) Does Batgirl have a different grappling hook emblem than Batman does? Well, she must have the Batgirl logo on it. Must be slimmer. What is it? It's like, what it's is like, the Batgirl It's like, it's the Batman logo, but with well, like a Well, it has little boobs, <laughs> too. It has little boobs. It's the Miss Pac-Man version of the, yeah. Batman, the Batman logo. <laughs> so, Poison Ivy has a really bad pun um, earlier on that doesn't make any sense, where she goes, Gotham is mine for the greening. <laughs> what the hell does that even mean? You can't just words. replace... <laughs> You can't just replace the base of words with green or if plants. Gotham is mine for the planting might have even made more sense. The Gotham is mine for the greening. Like, what are they? What, what are they going for? Taking? I guess. Yeah. Okay. Gotham okay. is yeah. mine for the raking. Like, even more exciting. That's. I mean, this is how long they have to think about it. It's like so. But that's what I mean. Like. There's a lot of attempts at puns, but I, oh, oh, I still why even bother? Even I don't those. even know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm glad uh, that you enjoy it. I'm so grateful I, that you have things in your life. I think I presented all the evidence that I have. How about you guys ready to uh, <laughs> to take a break and come to verdict? Oh, and yes, I have I think no idea. Been ready. <laughs> I think this is going to be our biggest cliffhanger yet as to what the <laughs> verdicts will be. Hey there, I'm Joey Barbjolada. You can call me Joey Barbs, or Joey Babs, or Joey B, or whatever. In fact, you can call me whatever you want, just don't call me late for Mama's Pasta Fagioli, am I right? You don't know me, but you're gonna be really glad you did, if you run a podcast or radio show. I'm a radio sound effect guy, and not just any radio sound effect guy, I'm the best. As it happens, I'm also the cheapest. Why am I rate so low? I'll tell ya. You get any of the other sound effect guys and they bring in a big trunk or two filled with gizmos or doodads or some such. They bring coconuts or shoes or bells or whatever. I don't need that stuff. I do it all with my mouth. I'm the freaking Michael Winslow of the radio world. I'll go you one better. I'm even better than Michael Winslow. You know who that is, right? The police academy guy? Yeah, you know who I mean. But don't take my word for it. Listen to some of the work I've done and see for yourself just how realistical my sounds are. Don't go, Pete. We need you here so badly. I'm sorry, ma'am, but I've got some rustlers what needs to be brought to justice. Just let me climb down this creaky old porch and climb onto my trusty horse haystack. Come walk with me as I trot to the gate. Clip, clop, clip, clop, clip, clop, clip, clop. Oh, do take care of yourself, Pete. I'd hate for little Pete Jr. to grow up without his daddy. <laughs> You know I will, honey. You know I will. Now I'm gonna bend down, and I want you to give me a kiss for luck. Of course, my dear. Mm-hmm. All right, now. Off I go. Yeah! Slap! <laughs> oh boy, my heart just pounds when I hear them radio dramas. But it wouldn't be nearly so dramatic without all them sound effects to ground the drama in the real world. And I don't just do westerns. Okay, Beth, come on out. You've got nowhere to go. That's not the way I see it, copper. From what I can see, there's only two of you out there, and we got a whole army in here. Cock your guns, boys. Click, 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 click. Holy mustard, Tolly, there are a lot of them in there. We're gonna need some backup. Dispatch, this is car five niner. We're gonna need some backup out here. <laughs> That close, huh? Oh, good. Good job, boys. Okay, that's now we've got you surrounded. Come on out with your hands up. Not a chance. Get him, boys. Boy, I could almost feel them bullets whizzing through the air. And lest you think I'm only capable of earthly sounds, check this out. Astronaut Cody, look up there. It's an unidentified flying object. It sure is, Judy, and I think it's coming down for a landing. Goodness, the door is opening! 
and something's coming out. Oh my god, it's hideous! <gasps> Judy? Judy! She's fainted dead away. I warned them when they said they'd have parted me with a woman. Are you Earth creature? I sure am. More than that, I'm an American. Then die! Zap! Boy, it makes you feel like you're right up there on Mars. Or the moon. Or wherever the hell that scene took place. I could go on and on playing examples for you, but I think I made my point. I'm the best and cheapest guy in the business. So if you want your stupid little radio play or broadcast drama to be jazzed up with a bunch of neat and genuine sound effects, call me up. Again, the name is Joey Barbagelata. You can call me up at 555-3576 or... Beep, beep, boop, beep, bop, bop, bop. Thanks for listening. All right, thank you, Joey, for keeping our podcast afloat. Well, you're all going to be surprised. I love this movie. I really, <laughs> I really, really dig it. I think it's it's funny, and uh, yeah, there's some action and stuff, too, but it's just really funny. <laughs> now, who wants to jump in and, and tell me that I changed their minds and that it's actually a really good movie? You're so low. No, 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 don't all <laughs> shout at the same time. Uh, so I guess I'm being outvoted. Lauren? What do, you, what do you got? I, you know, I I want to see this movie rebooted in more capable hands. I think that the funny Batman would be an interesting change, especially now that we live in the Chris Nolan world of Batmans and the hyper-realistic. This would be fun to revisit. Joel Schumacher is not that man. He never has been, and... This He's not a great director, I will say that, but even a stopped all. clock is right twice a day. <laughs> and so, yeah, this movie doesn't work for me. Mm. How about you, Bobby? I will say, like, I did try to tackle this movie fairly, um, with, with Batman 66 especially in mind. And especially now that I think, like, the DC movies, what they need is, is a, is a sense of humor. Um, but, oh, it's just not funny. Like, none of it is fun. None of it's funny. And I think this movie genuinely works better as a collection of YouTube clips. <laughs> um, like, I think that's the ideal way to watch this movie. That reminds me, I'm, um, I'll, like, put in a movie in my bedroom just for, like, getting up in the morning or just a few minutes here and there, and I've got Batman Forever in there right now, and it's like, this isn't as bad as I remember it, but I know that if I was sitting down and watching it, like, oh, God, this is awful. It would be terrible. I, did, I hated Batman Forever. Yeah, I feel a little bit bad that Batman and Robin is blamed as the you know, franchise killer. It is, but Batman. Batman. And Batman Forever is very bad too. It's really bad, but Killer I don't. I don't. Bad. It's not as relentless as Batman. <laughs> it's not, Robin. but it's still. I think that one's still held up as like that one was good. Like, it's no, it's no. bad, but in a different way. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. <laughs> uh, how about you, Laura? Yeah. No. Sorry. It uh. Still sucks. <laughs> no. I mean, there are moments where you kind of feel like you're in another world, and and it's fun. Like you can kind of see where he's where Joel Schumacher is trying to go with it, with the, you know, kind of whimsical aspect to it. But I just, it doesn't work. It's just, it, it drags on. And you know what? I, sorry, but I'm not going to get those two hours back. <laughs> <laughs> Did you say you watched it a few times, actually? Well, I saw it a long those time. Six hours yeah, back. actually, I saw it a long time ago. And then um, I rewatched it and I fell asleep. And then... <laughs> I, I can't see it. <laughs> I had to rewatch the ending. Uh, well, even though I didn't change your minds, I thank you for giving it your giving it a fair <laughs> shake. But you're all wrong. It was an amazing movie. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, let's get down to plugs, shall we? Yes. Please. <laughs> Upperclassmen's doing a show. That's my improv group. We're doing our Christmas show. By the way, if you missed our drunk show, it was really good, or so I've been told. <laughs> I don't remember anything of it. But the uh, Christmas show should be much more memorable on my end, at least. It is December 14th at the Long Beach Playhouse. You can't get your tickets online, I've discovered. Uh, you can find out... What, if you track down one of the cast members, you can, though, beforehand. Or you just show up to the... To the door. Buy tickets there. That's pretty reliable. And it's at seven... We'll say seven. Do you guys have a Facebook page? I, we, I think we've got something, but it's... Uh, I think we have a, a Twitter and a Facebook, but I don't know if it's really updated. It's so. monitored. Okay. Yeah. This is actually probably your best place for upperclassmen-related news. <laughs> How about you, um, You guys, I am number 23rd. I have a birthday coming up, Woo! so you're welcome to get me anything shiny or sparkly. And uh, that's all. Are we invited to your party? <laughs> Ooh, this oh, is awkward. I was top last year. That's going to be hard. 
51st anniversary of Doctor Who. Yeah. <laughs> I still have all the stuff. Bring out the Dalek I made out of a traffic median. And everyone in our audience is invited. <laughs> if That's you probably can... true. <laughs> yeah. My two friends that have listened are yeah. really invited. <laughs> I'll have you know, there were like 14 downloads of our last episode or something like that. That's yeah. interesting. Yeah, but... I wonder how people find them. I don't know. I have no idea. Because but... we're absolutely recording have as we... if no one is listening. This have... is for us. Have we gotten any reviews? Um, No. I haven't well, even read I need to go read a fake review right now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, go review us, you jerks. Yeah. 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 I follow, mean, and like us we on love Facebook. You. Yeah, okay, we, well, we need to get our friends. Facebook going. And after all yeah, we yeah. do for you, watching these, after all the three of you do, because they watch movies that they don't like, I watch Batman and Robin, which is amazing. <laughs> Bobby, you have anything to plug? Uh, no, not really. You can follow me on Twitter if you want, at Bob Manor. So oh. I am on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, so find me. <laughs> cool. I think that should do it. All right. Good job, everyone. Good show, everyone. Yay. Yay. Woo. See you next time. <laughs> Bye. Da, da, da. Da, 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 da. Great Podcast. movie. <laughs>